Hello guys, my name is Manuel and uh, last year I've made a couple of slides for myself and now I would like to share them with you in a presentation. Topic would be internationalization main points. Let's keep it short and just dive into it. I do speak multiple languages. I've also been involved in the development process of the multiple projects. Some of them were including dealing with 80 plus languages. So I used to do a lot of localization, internationalization, translation stuff for this project. And yeah, localization. So as you may know, localization is a process of the adaptation of your product project for the cultural and linguistic needs for your targeted audience or the market. As you might also know, the dates sometimes can become confusing. And to prove the point, let's consider an example. Consider current date. From current date, it's not obvious whether it applies to the 12th of November 2018 or 11th of December 2018, right? I'll use JavaScript in my uh, examples because it's quite easy to copy paste them into your browser and see instantly the result. As you can see from current snippet, I'm using ECMAScript internationalization API to uh, format current date uh, using different localities. And the result will be the following. So this font stands for the British English, this one for US English, this one for Lithuanian, and etc. Same applies for the depth zone separator. And especially if you're dealing with money, it's quite important to get this right. Uh, what I'm doing here, I'm again formatting current number using different localis. So, as you can see, the result is again different for different localis. I think it's quite clear here. Order. Order is something that also may be different for different languages. In current example, I'm using local compare method, or, or the strings local compare method. And uh, in this example, I'm using Lithuanian. Why I'm doing so? Because it's quite interesting that in Lithuanian, uh, letter Y usually comes before letter n. And if I would be sorting current array of these strings for the Lithuanian locale, I would have got current result. So yeah, it's something you might consider if you're creating uh, some application when you need to sort the user's usernames, <laughs> your customer's usernames. So this trick might come handy. Accessibility. When you are developing multi-language projects or website, it's also a good idea to make a use of the lang attribute. Used on the HTML element, lang attribute declares the language of the document. When you're using on the other element, it basically tells the user agent information about the language of that element's content. hreflang provide information about target language of the link. It is used uh, within the anchor tag and in the current example it basically says DE documentation page is in German. I'm using it with current CSS snippet, which I think it's also a good idea beside of providing that information to the user agents only to provide also visual feedback, which will result into something like this. Accept language header provide information about user preferences for the specific languages. As you can see, it does come with this new variable, which basically stands for the weight. It basically means 
higher the weight, higher the user preferences for a specific language. You might get also information about user language preferences from the navigator languages. And I think it's a good idea to use that in order to provide your users a relevant result. So, for example, even though I do have like current preferences set up in my Chrome browser, which basically stands for the uh, English US as a first preference, and then comes the Russian and the other uh, languages, I still keep getting current results when I'm traveling. So, in Germany, I'm getting targeted ads that are not considering my language preference. So I think it's a good idea to make a use of that information to provide user more relevant content. And I'm noticing that in almost everywhere I'm traveling, the most services I'm using do not consider that information. There are some attributes that you might also want to translate as well. I did notice that it's quite often that some of them, especially title and alternative attributes, are being forgotten. And if you would like to provide the best user experience to your users and have a better SEO optimization, you might also want to consider translating them as well. As you may know, not all languages work the same way. There are languages that are written left to right, there are languages that are written right to left. Some languages are flexible and they can be written vertically. Lately, I was designing a current layout if I have, and if I were not taking that into the consideration. Uh, for some user, I, would, I, I may provide uh, similar user experience. So, in order to provide consistent user experience to all the users that are uh, expecting a specific direction of that layout to work for their language as well, it's also a good idea to design the layout the way that would also fit that requirement. Here are some common examples designing the layout let's say you have this header menu and you have the hamburger button on the right and let's say that hamburger button is uh, positioned absolutely but the problem with this implementation is that this doesn't consider other direction of the languages. What I mean is that if you, for example, will get a new requirement saying like translating a current layout to Arabic, you might end up with something like this. In order to avoid this, uh, what would you usually do is maybe provide some exception and uh, override a uh, right to left uh, direction saying like in case the direction is right to left, moves the hamburger to the left. But it's always a good idea to design the layout the way that you don't need to maintain different directions. For example, using display flex, as in the current example. But it's totally up, uh, up to you how you want to design and having such a design that would not require adaptation for different direction, in this case left to right or right to left, it's a good idea. With a vertical direction it's becoming a bit tricky, but I'm not going to cover that in the current presentation, maybe I'll cover it later. And also one common issue comes with a fixed layout design. So let's say you have this button which has a fixed width, but when this button is being translated, you might end up having result like this. 
in order to avoid that it's always a good idea not to design uh, layouts for fixed weights and in this case let's say you have like a, a right margin specified and the new requirement is to translate the page to Hebrew you might end up with something like this so in order to keep your layout direction independent it's also a better idea to use a technique that would cover that case as well fonts is a different story when you're choosing a font you might want to get one that is supported by all your targeted languages consider fallbacks for the one that is not supported by the specific font and also make use of the Unicode ranges. I'll cover this soon. So let's say you would like to have a Sursans Pro 3 version of it, like light, regular and bold, and also have all the uh, subset supports for the Sursans Pro, which include Cyrillic, Greek, Vietnamese, Latin, Latin accent, and etc. What you en will end up with, you will end up uh, with a, a font file which would be like, uh, around 350 kilobyte if it's WoW2 format, and if you need to support like, PTF format, uh, then you might end up with a file that is bigger than one megabyte. To avoid that, what you would like to do, you would like to split the font into the different chunks and using unicode ranges you can also load the relevant chunks that one that you need so specifying the in the font page the unicode range it basically says for uh, if uh, my page contain characters that is within current unicode range Please load current font, which is a subset of the Sursans Pro for the Kyrillic version in this case. And in order to split your code into the multiple smaller parts, what I usually do, I'm using this font tools. It's a Python library and it's a quite easy to use it to split your font for example yeah in this example i'm extracting armenian uh, characters from deja vu sans font by specifying the unicode range for armenian characters and uh, specifying that i would like to have a wolf 2 format and output file destination or you also might want to uh, use Google Font API and by specifying the subsets you need and basically the version of the font, you might also get a file like this, which probably will do all that magic for you quite easy. SEO. In order to have a better search engine optimization, you might also want to translate your project page titles and descriptions into the supported languages. That way you will provide more relevant search engine result, which will also lead into the traffic increase for your project. Rel alternate hreflang metadata provide information about alternative languages for a specific page. Current snippet basically says this page is also available in English and Spanish within current URLs. You might also want to use link rel canonical for duplicate content. It sometimes happens that you might end up with a duplicate content, and especially when you're developing a multi language website. Sometimes it may happen with a default language duplication. To avoid that, in the search result, you might want 
to use similar snippet. This snippet says basically to the search engine crawler to index current page. That way you might also avoid having lower ranking in the search result. Same as with the search engine optimization, you might also want to optimize for social media marketing. For that reason, you might also want to translate meta information that are related to the social media marketing. As you can see from the current example, the social media images, thumbnail translated, title, description, OG locale provide information about specific language of the specific content, local alternate about information about alternative languages that are available for this content. Okay guys, thanks for watching the video. I'm planning to tackle the different techniques of implementing internet sensation in the next video. If you are watching this video in the future, so that video probably is already available and you can find it somewhere in the description below. If it's not, stay tuned, it will be available soon. Other than that, again, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and yeah, keep your project content translated. Have a good one. Ciao.